And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the monastery, the open bar of the internet, the world's greatest shit show, and the place where we, the good brothers and sisters of this most holy of temples, seek enlightenment through the drunkest, craziest, and most batshit ways possible. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me, I have a couple newcomers into the temple. In the red corner, we have Alexander Hartung. And in Hi. the blue and in the blue corner we have Mikey F Funrich. Sorry for sorry for mispronunciation. How you two how you two doing well tonight on your end? <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much. Great to be here. Mm -hmm. Yes, indeed. So and yes, I I had to do the red and blue corner like it's a boxing match. That's my tradition. <laughs> okay. But I'm Big sized compared to Mike, so I'm optimistic that I may come out as a winner. Size uh -huh. is not everything. Technique is important. I never, I never said anything about no low blows. <laughs> uh -huh. Okay, okay. Yeah, but a tradition around here is opening with the humble beginnings, in a sense. So. Walk me through your first introduction to role-playing games and what made it stick. Um, I started 89, 1989 with role-playing, and it was a total new hobby for me, which fascinated me from the beginning. A, a way to play a game which was totally new for me. Mm -hmm. I would say um, I started in 2018, I think. Um, and it just, it was really cool to be able to play a game, um, and be like part of the story. Um, but actually being able to do everything you, you can imagine, you know, uh, in contrast to video games where you're limited by the pro programming. Mm -hmm. And with, with that in, with that in mind... Given where given where you two given where you two come from, I'm I feel like I feel like I'm almost obligated to ask if, er, if early on you were exposed to, what we in the states call the dark eye, also known as Dash Wars Anga. Yep. I know this was I know one. My German sucks, but but I'm doing the best I can. <laughs> no, it sounds great. Dash Wars Auge. It's it was the the first it was the second game to be honest. The first was called Midgard. I mean, it was a copy of um, D and D and AD and D, um, because it was in in the in the eighties and nineties. What it was hard to get this stuff, you know, no internet, and it was it was pure despair to get to make a German role playing game because it was so hard to get this um, American stuff. From and, what I remember, from what I have heard, and mm -hmm. is that. TSR had worked with a German company at one point to try and get a German translation of um, AD and D yep. in in Germany, but mm -hmm. something happened. The deal fell through, and the translation company instead just decided to use what they had at that point and make their own game. Um, we have some. We had AD and D was the first German translation. I have a lot of stuff of them, and it was great to to become better in in the Dragonlands world and all this stuff. But it was not much, you know. As you said, at some point they failed. Mm. I don't know why and what happened. And um, this was really sad. So you had only a few books in German and a lot of books in English, and so uh, the, the the German role playing um, um, scene developed after that. Really good. With more and more games, so um, yeah, this was kind of um, A D and D and and Dungeons and Dragons was the yeah, it's like a lot of the rings for for role playing games. Mm -hmm. So it started everything, but um, then we had our German market, which was quite yeah, a, a bad copy, let's say like that. Yeah, um, of A D and D. Yeah, now obviously the I've I can I. I did a review of the Dark Eye a, f um, a, f a few years ago, and I had I had said that I had said at the time that it, the there may have been a a D and D influence at first, but by this point that is long gone and it and it, fe yeah. and it feels wholly like its own thing, especially with that whole three D twenty approach it's doing. Mm -hmm. 
It's the mm. fifth edition. If you uh, the new Dark Eye, when when um, Ulysses um, traveled over the the big ocean, uh, like we say, and and make a English translation, it's the fifth edition of of Dark Eye. Mm. So there was um, we played what the first and the second, which was very very close to advanced D and D, um, and but the new they have now developed their own style. Um, it's not my style of role playing. Um, but um, they have the what to do, and they have a, a huge fan community here in Germany mm-hmm. with, with a lot of fan-made stuff. Not oh, yeah. as big as, as Dungeon and Dragon, but still, it's okay from a German perspective. It's okay. Mm-hmm. Now, a lot of times, a lot of times when I've brought people on, I've talked about the concept of Appendix N, which is mm-hmm. or, originally Appendix N was it was in was in old school D and D and was a list of Inf- list of influences or recommended material when it comes to mm-hmm. um com- when it comes to comics books movies tv tv shows etc et um mm-hmm. what would be some of the material for sphere child's appendix n as far as the things that served as a major influence in terms of its creation oh this is a hard question so the 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 idea is we have several worlds and um, um, fantasy world is still appendix N with um, Conan and Stormbringer and and Lord of the Rings and all this stuff. But the idea was what do you do when you have um, Captain James T Kirk and you have Gandalf the Grey as a character and you want to have an adventure with both of them at the same time. So the, the worlds itself are not that far from appendixes and, and what you what you know in general about fantasy and science fiction. But the idea was to make it at the same time. And there is, as far as I know, nothing. Maybe there's a little bit the idea of talk um, who has uh, quite the uh, same direction like we have, but we're still very different to talk. But um, yeah, but the fantasy is still um, um, Robert E. Howard and all the stuff with a lot of magic, with a lot of barbarians and different um, um, species and, and, and monsters. It's, it sounds to me that you guys built Sphere Child, even though, you ha- even though you're presenting two worlds, one a, fa- one a sword and sorcery fantasy and one a mm-hmm. science fiction world, but... It sounds like you you build it as a foundation that you could do um, a potential infinite amount of worlds, or that play, yeah. or that um, tables yeah, exactly. could do that. Um, yeah, Mike, go continue. Uh, well, yes, exactly. It's um, it's a universal rule system, and um, you can, um, the, the the core rules, you know, the skills and everything is exactly the same for any kind of world you're playing in. Um, for example, um, ground vehicles can be cars, but it can be um, hovering um, ground spacecraft, or it can be horses. Anything's possible. Um, and there's a lot of um, customization. And there's, uh, for example, in the core rulebook, there's a small um, section about how to create your own worlds. And it's short because it's very straightforward. Mm-hmm. So when you have an idea, we can show you how to integrate it. Mm-hmm. So when you are an experienced D&D player, you will have no problems for the rules that you We have attributes, we have skills, we have D20, you know, we have all the things. Maybe a little bit more streamlined. And then you have your powers um, you can choose. And then um, the idea is that you have a, a, a adventure where you can switch the worlds in one adventure. So at one evening, you can switch the worlds two, three times. Because you have to, because only when two groups or your two characters are successful, you reach the goal or you can solve the adventure. And yeah. this was the idea. Of course, there is a kind of a, um, um, we have several worlds and we don't have to, to make a, a new rule set for every world. This was kind of a universal approach, but the idea is still um, switch the worlds with a character, not switch the worlds with the character, but you have a character on every world and switch them the the worlds to the next character. Exactly. So, um, you just to clarify perfectly, you have um, two characters, one for this world, one for the other world, and at some point you reach um, an obstacle on the first world that you just can't overcome on your own. 
and then you um, communicate that obstacle with your partner in the other world and um, you continue playing them and they resolve something that then resolves the obstacle on the first world. Mm -hmm. And then you continue with the first world. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> in, the, in that regard, the game that instantly comes to mind is... The, is the more multi-dimensional aff affairs like, say, The Strange. Now you're getting me. I have, a, I have 500 role-playing systems, but not The Strange. <laughs> um, Can we cut out this? <laughs> <laughs> no, sorry. No, um, um, it's... Uh, I'm always looking forward to, to having um, um, new role-playing, so please continue. What is The Strange? That was the... That that is that was the second game that was that was made using this what's now known as the cipher system after mm -hmm. Luminera. With oh, okay. the Luminera I, has yeah. mm -hmm. the idea the idea being that the player characters are are go, are inter, are interdimensional travelers, but it's not necessarily traveling as it's mm -hmm. as is typically described. The book describes it as translating. Mm -hmm. Where the the appearance and abilities that you can, that you potentially have, depending on the world that you're in, will change to bet to better fit in with the world that you're in. Because a little bit like Assassin's Creed from the idea and that you switch to this world and get a new character. Yeah, to to a point, because it would be mm -hmm. it would be out of place if if you're look if you're looking humanoid in a world where humans don't exist. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you would take on the appearance of something that does exist in that world. Yet the, the basic different thing between this is that you, you're still a barbarian. So but this sounds for me like you are a very intelligent person and you know exactly that you have a, a, a another look or another... Uh, you are another person, but you still have the intelligence of you. But you are the barbarian, and you have only knowledge about your fantasy world. Yeah, you have no idea what a, what a spacecraft is, and you will never have it. And and you are uh, in a spacecraft, you never have an idea what magic really is. You know, mm -hmm. and this is the idea that the, this was the idea too that we keep the yeah the the basic idea of a character and, and not give it let's say more information that he can handle. Yeah, when you go like 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 talk for example go from a very primitive way to a to a spacecraft you change in your mind chains you know when you know what computer is and this is what we wanted to avoid that you really just are a fantasy character and you are only a fantasy character and what you do is on the fantasy world and there's no influence from from outside mm -hmm. So the characters are um, both of your characters are completely separate and independent uh, entities, essentially. All right, but but they know each other. They can. The interesting thing is they they can change powers. You know, you can change attribute and change skills and all this stuff. So you are very um, close together. We call it siblings. It's, it's more than brothers and sisters because they are so close together. And they can change. So even the 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 the. the the choice you have with the two characters is um, special. You know, you can take two, you know, hard guys, a barbarian and a, and a mercenary, or you can take a thief and a, I don't know, a scientist. And this changes um, your your style of playing, what you choose. So, um, for example, um, you are playing a scientist on one world uh, in the science fiction world, and you're playing. A um, barbarian in the fantasy world and they have uh, a, a weak connection through telepathy basically and um, if the barbarian suddenly needs to analyze um, I don't know uh, like try to solve a riddle or something mm -hmm. he might be able to borrow um, some of the knowledge from um, the scientist on the uh, science fiction world and uh, receive some tips basically and um, improve his um, role through throwing um, through the other person's dad. Mm -hmm. 
on the other hand, when you have a mercenary, you can you can take some some weapons who are similar. For example, a laser gun is not big different to a to to a bow, let's say. So you can say, okay, I don't have a bow, but my 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 brother has a kind of a laser gun, and I can take this, and it will go down, let's say, like that, from the technology level to a to a bow, and so therefore I can choose bow. Mm-hmm. And and then I have a new um um power for for five minutes let's say i can now handle a bow it takes some it takes some sphere points so you will not get it every time and and unlimited you you get some some points you have from savage world so this kind of um, where you have a, a pool of points and there you can give it for them but they can really switch um things together or i can improve so you can you can say your brother okay i'm good in I don't know, uh, in, in making wood, and my, my brother is also good in making wood, and when, when we both get together, so we, we get a better, um, we get more dice, you know, we get 3 d20 than 1 d20, for example, because we are both experienced in, in one thing, and we are both working on it. Yeah. <clears throat> now, since you mentioned... A bit, a bit streamlined as opposed as opposed to more ubiquitous fantasy games. I did mm-hmm. see in the quick starter that it, that there was only me- there was only mention of utilizing the d20 and d6 as, as far mm-hmm. as dice. Is that is that something that's present throughout? Where you where yep. those are the only two types of dice you're going to be using throughout throughout play? Yeah, exactly. The yeah. whole um, basically. Um, you always use the d20, you know, for any kind of um, checks and rolls. Um, mm-hmm. However, you use the d6 for the damage or for healing and stuff like that. But basically, just d20 and, and d6 in some situations. Yeah. For the d20, is that an aim high or aim low affair? It's aim, aim high. high. Mm-hmm. All right. So like you said, you have a skill, um, 10, 15... And then you you have a have a goal to reach. Let's say you want to climb uh, a tree f- during during a storm. Then you have twenty to reach, and then you add a d twenty. But we have some some additional. You can, for example, you are you can learn a mastery. Then you can have two d twenty and choose the best one. For example, mm-hmm. this is the thing. The the basic rule system in in our book. So our book contains three hundred pages. And it's about 70 to 80 pages is only the rule book, the rule set. This is everything you, you need on rules. The, the rest is, is, is the two worlds described. So this was one of the main goals to make a very good and very flexible system, but keep it really low, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, you, and... um, yeah, it's, it's very easy to start playing Sphere Child um, as a player. If you just see the character sheet and you've played maybe some D&D, or even if you never played any RPG, um, it, it takes a few minutes and you basically know the rules and can do everything you want to do. Yeah. Now, with with that in mind, because I did, I did see the, the fact that you have an attribute range from 4 to 18, Mm-hmm. But from what it's from what it seems, it's not the typical approach when it comes to the formula between the score of an attribute and its modifier for, say, skills. So, what it what would determine the mo- the modifier? Is it something we have its its well, own specific chart? Or... You've um, just seen the quick starter. Uh, mm-hmm. In the quick starter, the characters are slightly simplified, and um, the modifiers are removed um, on the sheets. Normally, there would be modifiers similar to D and D five. So, so you have one to five. D and D's D and D's approach has. Since thir- since third edition, been um, minus minus ten and th- and then cut it in half to determine the modifier. Is mm-hmm. there a similar formula here, or is it yeah. diff- or is it a yeah. bit different? No, you have you start with ten and you reach eighty or ninety, and which is plus five. So you have the uh, the basic idea is um to have this modifier is not is only. When you are, let's say, you have a very intelligent, you are a very intelligent person with eighteen, so you have plus four, you know. And the basic idea is, even when you don't have um, the skill of 
I don't know, um, you are medicine or something, then you are, because you're an intelligent person, you may know it. And so the skill starts at five, but when you are very intelligent, you always have four for every intelligent skill, so to say, you know. Mm -hmm. This was the idea that, that because we hate it when you say, okay, do you have it? No, so you have no idea which is in, in, in our modern time stupid. Maybe you heard about it, maybe you're not a me medicine, but you maybe when you see a wound cut open, you can help in you know some basic way. And this was the idea that you have kind of, a, a, for every intelligence in that case, a slight skill in everything when you are an intelligent person, for example. When you are strong and you are not skilled to, I don't know, cut wood, but you will be able to cut wood, maybe not as good as a professional woodcutter you know mm. and and this is the idea that we have this this pluses um from 10 that we say okay this is kind of a basic skill for everything yeah and speaking of that when it comes to skills mm -hmm. uh, now obviously i did i did note the the rule that the, that the cap is the re is the relevant attribute but when it comes to weapon skills it's is it a case where developing them is is kind of a kind of a free point that you can apply towards towards attack parry or damage mm -hmm. it's the basic idea is attack uh, parry damage because in my opinion this always works you know, when you look at the biggest, what are the biggest role-playing systems, you know, you have, it's my Pathfinder, it's Dungeons & Dragons, you have Warhammer, you have Shadowrun, and the big one I always work the same, so I don't, I, we didn't see, it doesn't make sense to make it all new, but what we added is kind of, of, of weapon sub-skills, you know, to make it better, um, that the weapon a little bit typic more typical than only damage, so when you have a big broadsword, you may be slow, but you have a lot of um, um, damage. But when you have a dagger, you are much faster. Maybe you can throw the dagger, for example. It's another um, 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 skill, a sub-skill, um, a maneuver, so, if like you like. Maneuvers, exactly. Yeah. Um, and something this is the... know you can learn uh, to do with your weapon. You can do two-handed combat. You can, you know, we have a lot of maneuvers you can combine and all this stuff. And so it's very interesting. So you can choose your style. Um, I am the fast thief who has a small dagger. Maybe I use poison as well. Or I am the barbarian with the big eggs who, you know, kills everything, but it takes some time. Mm -hmm. And this is another thing. So we don't want to focus only on damage. The most uh, dark eye, for example, 99% have the same weapon because it's the weapon <laughs> with the with the highest damage you know all the stuff you can get rid of because you said why should i take the weapon with the lower damage when i have the exactly result but makes more more damage and this what what you don't want it so we we, we we took some time to develop maneuvers so it's very interesting you know um to what you how how to um attack maybe more parry more defense and all this stuff so you can choose how you want to uh, fight you know at the end which i'm glad to hear because i'm always looking for ways to make combat dynamic i yep. even even in my early days i absolutely hated the concept of basic attack in a, mm -hmm. in a lot of games because we're can a lot of I'd say a lot of people the appeal of playing a martial focused character is going to come from the sh the shows f films and the like that they watch and when you look at fight scenes in those whether it be mm -hmm. wh whether it be whether it be a martial arts movie whether it be a more swashbuckling movie it is it is not just basic is not just basic attack it's always significantly more um, dynamic even when I yeah. started getting into Hema that was that that was certainly the case uh, mm -hmm. and no it yeah it and when you when you br when you have that background you br and you bring that try and bring that into a lot of games where it's just basic attack it interferes with the fantasy absolutely yeah so we have a lot of stuff for example we have um group maneuvers so i think it's very hard to to get defend three people who attack exactly exactly at the same time Mm -hmm. on different 
points of your body you know when you have three people sometimes you have it that they come one after another and when these three people are really good together and they exact really at the same time it's really hard for you to defend it and this is all the stuff and what we also did um you learn a maneuver and you you, you have it so you don't have to okay now i have plus three or plus five so when you have two attacks per round you make two attacks per round you don't have extra or something like that and this is really what we, we want to do it very quick and want to do it very big and once you have you know understand the idea of like you said dynamic it's very interesting to see how you want to attack you know do i get a shield do i get a second weapon i am very fast so i know the first attack is always on me you know now i focus on the first attack one big blow but when it's not working i have a problem with parry and all this stuff and this goes permanently through your mind mm -hmm. what is the monster how how strong is the is our um, opponent is he fast is he big has it a lot of um, armor and all this stuff, and then you can ch change your way of, of attacking, you know? I also think uh, a really beautiful um, detail is that um, any well, any skill in general, but also any weapon is available to any character, so you're not bound by any class um, pre-selections that the developer made, so you can build a character exactly as you want it, and you can be a wizard with a giant sword if you want that. Yeah. Ah, good old Gish. <laughs> yeah. No, the problem is also, for example, the, the, the bonus we talked about, you have a, a damage bonus, but it's not dependent on strength. It depends on the way you, you choose your weapon. So when you have a dagger, it's dependent on dexterity. And when you have a high dexterity, you get a high damage bonus. Not because of the strengths, because you are very... Um, good in, 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 in handling that weapon. So um, when you have a big axe, it's from the constitution, then you, when you are big and powerful, then you get it um, because you are big and powerful. Mm -hmm. So it depends on your, so it's not automatically the, 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 the most strongest doesn't automatically make the most damage. Because when I have my, like a pirate buckler and have six attacks in one round with two hands, maybe I can kill the big guy because with the, with the aches, you know, and with a sword and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. Or you use your maneuver and you just stab the guy through the um, holes in the armor. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And given, given that... Since you mentioned Gish, I suppose this I suppose that's a natural spot to go into. It it sounds like the approach that you're doing with magic is that magic is a is another type of skill. It's within the skill system instead of yeah. being wholly its own um its own separate bu bubble. Pretty I guess much, yeah. would be the bit would be uh, the word that comes yeah. to mind. Mechanically, yeah, the it's magic the same is as the other skills. Yeah. yeah. But you say yeah, what you only... want, and I tell you what you what you get. You know mm -hmm. what what it will cost you. Um, we 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 are away from skills in the classical uh, from 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 um, scrolls and all this stuff. So normally you have a fireball. This is ten meters. Makes three d three d six damage, please. Yeah. But now I said, okay, you can vary it everything you want. So there's a variable stuff. So how much damage do you want? How much? Um, how far is your 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 goal? Uh, your your target and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. And with the end, you um, get a skill check, and that's all. You know. Um, I don't know. Let's say I, I told you uh, a friend comes. Oh, I don't believe that. I said, okay, what do you want? You now you have some orcs who run to you. I will make a fire wall. And I said, okay, how big is the fire wall? That size. How make damage? Does it want that size and how far is it that size? And I said, okay, 17. And he was totally shocked, you know, to how can you do this? And he said, yeah, it's a, it's a system where you say what you want to do and then you can see what it costs you. Mm -hmm. And this is the reason why the skill, uh, while the, the, the rule system is so small, because um, when you have these 500 spells you normally have in something, you have a lot of space. And when you said, okay, I have fire. And this explains in one page how fire works. It's very easy, and you can do every fire spell you can imagine. Yeah. And you combine it, combine it with other stuff, you know. 
I said I combine it with the illusion. This is one of my favorites, combine it with the illusion. And I make a 1.1 um, hole. It looks like a hole, you know. It's still fire, but I make an illusion of a hole in, in the fireball and everybody wants to jump through it. Mm. Mm. Not a good idea, you know. Works every time. Yeah, and the... With... Now... With that in with that in mind, especially since mm -hmm. you're using you're using M, you're using MP, it lo it looks like on the sheets. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> is it is it a case where the skill application is is um is still a, is still a skill role, but the but um the size of the effect is go is going to determine how much MP you're spending. I.e., this isn't yep. a fire and forget affair. It's it's very easy. It's um you every ten you have one MP. So the the uh, seventeen means you have two magic points. And when you make a a, a big one, a, a, then you have three or four mm -hmm. magic points. It depends what you do. This is the question. It's like like in the fight. So the idea idea is okay. Do I make two small casts, for example, who are very fast, or do I make a big one who takes me more time? Mm -hmm. so this is again. Strategical thinking, let's say, like that, mm -hmm. and it depends what you want to do. And some people just want to throw three fireballs in a in a round, and others said, "No, I make one big point, and this is a big one." Yeah. So I'm get I'm guessing it's a case where you can where um. Well, let let's put let's put it in practice since we're since we talked about fireballs. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm get I'm guessing it'd only be one point if some if somebody just wanted to do a single target bolt made made of fire, um if somebody wanted to do, um a mo a more spread affair almost almost like turning mm -hmm. the fireball into a magic shotgun, that'd probably mm -hmm. be like t that'd probably be like two because of the spread, and if they wanted to do if they wanted to do a big AOE that'd be more that'd be more than two is that how it kind of works? Yeah. Um, very uh, on the rule set, you said okay. When you want to explode, it, every meter is one is one um, damage more. So you say okay, I want to have three d six on the on the center, and then one meter two d six, and th two meters one d six. Let's say it like that. Mm -hmm. Or you said oh, nay, I want I want the short one, and then you get a little um, a modifier by making making um, more casts in one round, but you have more the shotgun effect, uh, the 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 machine gun effect. You have several small ones, or you have one big one who explodes, mm -hmm. and this is very simple to to um, calculate both of it but as i said it depends on you maybe you have maybe this this guy has a good um a magical uh defense i don't know the, the right english word right now and um they said okay maybe i can try three casts and maybe he gets one or two and maybe when i have only one he resists this kind of, you know, this is always the thing. Who's your enemy? You know, who's the, who's your opponent? And this is very strategic. It sounds really complicated and very, very mind-driven, but it's really big fun. And when you have more than one um, possibility to make damage, yeah, then it's very interesting um, mm -hmm. to to combine all this stuff to to one cast. And with with that in with that in mind, mm -hmm. when it comes, I'm guessing that's the reason why you guys are cho are choosing um, the magic skills to be based on elements because that's going to be something that could be shared between the different spheres, even if the way way magic or its equivalent would be used isn't exactly the same. Yeah, it's we have around twenty magical skills, but yeah, it's not very spectacular. You have um, necromancy as well, which is very evil <laughs> to use it on a on a sphere without magic. Yeah, imagine there's there's a demon in front of your door, you know, who is resistant again against all damage. You know, you will even when you are the strongest soldier or mercenary in the world, you will not survive this. And this is a really interesting aspect when you have when you put a little bit magic in 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 a science fiction world, for example. Um, this is really um, has some some interesting effects. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So elements is 
what the people like the most, but you have I don't know, defense where you make shields. You have illusions. It's very easy to say, okay, how big is the illusion? Do you want to have it, uh, for example, a smell illusion, a touch illusion, or, or the classical, I can see um, a dragon, you know, see illusion, or do you a, a hearing illusion? Do you add some screams to it? All this stuff. And then you build your, your, your you know, your illusion, how you like it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> now, with with that in mind, because this is this is sounding very freeform, but mm -hmm. you guys are also doing a you also are doing profession as one of the pillars of of characterization. Mm -hmm. Well, yes, but um, it's not classes per se. It's more like. Um... Uh, skill sets that you can just easily select and you get those skills but you can just say you know I don't like any of those skill sets any of those professions I just pick skills myself mm -hmm. that's the same that, uh, it's just to make it easy because it's hard to get in a uh, in a new world in a new system and say do what you want you know this is not what I want I just want to have an idea what is a cool what is a cool profession or what do you want to play? Like Cthulhu, I play investigators, for example. I don't want to play, I don't know, a nurse. You know, you can play it on Cthulhu, but it's good to have some, some let's say, role models or some some ideas what you do. And, and as Mike said, you can, there's rules where you can um, make your, your own um, character on the one hand. On the second hand, it's not that it's limiting you. So when you said, okay, you, I'm a barbarian, the rule set doesn't say you can't perform magic. This is when you want to perform magic. Uh, for example, I have a thief who has teleportation magic. This is really a good combination. You know, he's not a good, he's not a good caster, but he specialized on teleportation magic, which is good enough to teleport himself. And this is really evil. <laughs> the thief and really big fun, you know? Mm-hmm. So basically, the whole rule system um, is designed to give you um, as much freedom as possible, but also <clears throat> we kept in mind that it can be a bit overwhelming and there's shortcuts for you to just make it easier. Which Sorry. is definitely definitely understandable because um, when you're dealing with when you're dealing with any game with that amount of freedom, analysis paralysis is something that's going to happen. There's no, there's no real way to get ar to get around it aside from nuking that's that mm -hmm. same level of choice, but it can be minimized. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm guessing the profession pa um, packages essentially is your is your way of do of of doing it. As yeah. as in, you could either spend X amount of skill points at char at character creation, or you can take one of the packages. Which exactly would yep. Yep. would those packages have the same amount have the same amount of skill point cost or is yep. it going to vary from profession to profession? No, it's it's the, it's the same. Um, you can we have if you like you have three choices. You can make the skill set we have. We always think about it. What could be the ten best skill points for that world? The second is you can you can roll the dice or you can just make a, a point based. Uh, well, yes and no. Uh, I think there's a little bit of confusion here. So the um, professions, they basically, I don't know, it's 40 points or something, and they are spent across the skills, something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, the that's same the points? same for each of those professions. Um, however, there's also point by for the attributes. Um, but, you know, that's just strength and dexterity and stuff like that. But you can roll them, point by them, whatever. Uh, professions they they have like a fixed um they all basically start at at that point by level something and then you just allocate it mm -hmm. and and you have the skill points yes not uh, you, you can't roll the skills this was my fault sorry for that but you have the same skill points you can um do on your skills than you have when you choose the profession it's the same. It's the same amount of skill points. So uh, there is no. Um, maybe you can r roll your attributes statistically. Maybe you're lucky. You you roll better than you do statistically. Basic. 
and and then you can have a better character but yeah it's 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 fair on whatever you want to do but it's okay when you when, when you come say i don't want a sword i want an axe so so why should the game master say no <laughs> I don't see that in your character or something like that, you know. So it's okay. You can very easily switch this um, when you say, uh, "I don't want to be, a, I don't know, a medicine. I just want to have some some more stuff about physics." And please choose this. Yeah. So it's not a big thing to um, to to change it. Um, yeah. So like when you choose a profession uh, and uh, like the the medic example exactly. Instead of you know picking that like there's a bunch of skills and you can just replace one skill with another if if that's the only issue you have with the um, profession you know or a weapon or something like that uh, a blaster instead of a um, a shocking um, you know a taser or something um, like uh, that mm -hmm. now with the, with that in with that in mind. Each of each of the sample characters I saw had a, had um some, had a couple shared powers, but had a <clears throat> unique power. Mm -hmm. When it comes to when it comes to powers, are those per, are those purchased as skills, or is there a different approach to them? No, no. You you choose what you want. You know, the normals have three to five powers. The first is the um, but you attributes and skill powers. Mm -hmm. Then you have three powers where you can really choose. You choose. We have a lot of samples, but finally you choose what your power you want to have. So we have uh, ideas for your professions. We have ideas for 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 your species and whatever you want. You have a lot of um, um, suggestions, but at the end you choose. And then we have a crew power, which is quite interesting. So you have a power over the whole crew, which could be telepathy, telepathy inside a group. You can switch your your um, appearance, for example, could be, or you can switch your um, sight. You know, but you see, okay, I want to see what my friend is seeing now because he's somewhere I don't know where, and all this stuff and crew powers and all um, um, individual powers build your character at the end. You don't so buy them said, with the um, no. experience points, though. No. Um, but you know, like if you collect a number of experience points, one hundred and fifty, um, no matter how you spend them, as soon as you've uh, collected that many, you get a new power and you can choose yeah. freely again. So you have one hundred five, you seven one hundred fifty points, then you get a new power for your character. You have three hundred points, then your group gets a new power in addition to your powers. A new crew power and all this stuff. So it's not really point based. It's it's just we we think that experience. You are so experienced that you get better and better. And as we said, it's your choice. We have several powers that you can choose from. When you said, "Oh no, I don't want to think about it," but we um, you can freely choose it. Mm -hmm. Interestingly, um, we've been playing the same characters for years. Uh, I mean, I haven't, but everyone else has in the group, the developer group, and. Um, we can still level them up. Um, I I don't know if other systems would uh, give you that much, you know, leveling um, scope. And you um, still are not a, a demigod, you know. Yeah. So um, yeah, this is the the problem because you have so many sub skills. You know, you can yeah, you can uh, for martial arts, you have a lot of sub skills where you can throw people or key people or kick people and you have sub skills for everything like like um, um a thief has so many sub skills mm -hmm. so which means you get you have a kind of a i don't know lock pick locking it's a sub skill from from all from the basic thief stuff and so so we have and they can combine it and and you make you your can character even specialized the specializations like um I'm specialized <laughs> in picking ancient locks um, made from dwarves or something yeah, yeah. Could you it, could could you in theory build build a thief that's less about um less about picking locks and the like and more in the vein of a confidence man? Yeah, uh, that's my my scheme most of the time. <laughs> you know, yeah, the the kind the assen essentially what's known as a diplomancer. Mm -hmm. in, yes, in some sort. Uh, sure, and absolutely. So, uh, 
a social, we would call it a social skill attacker, you know, who tries, like most of the people, when they come to your phone and said, um, oh, could you give me your password? Kind of this, but only in good, you know. Mm -hmm. And then I give you your password. Yeah, this kind, it, it depends on you, really. This is the good thing. You can you can do what you want. There is no rule says you are thief. You have to be a crown master in picking locks, you know. Yeah. And given that, there is one uh, there is one aspect when it comes to combat that a lot of games struggle with, and I, fi I figured mm -hmm. this is as good a time as any to ask, mm -hmm. and that is on dual wielding. Some ga some games will impose a lot of penalties, or that you have to take certain advantages in order to dual wield properly. Some, like like say Pathfinder, have the pay to not suck <laughs> attitude when it comes to what you need to get in order to be able to decently dual wield. Um, how do you how do you guys han handle dual wielding since that is going to be a popular um, fantasy with with so with so many characters given how many characters in fiction have, you know, two knives or two swords or in in the extreme case and I'm not saying doing this two great swords, you know, you never know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Mike, are you I don't know. Um, well, Alex, uh, it's better if you answer this one. I have no idea how dual wielding works. <laughs> you mean when when two p people come come with, with with swords and all this stuff and said, "Okay, I now we have to fight." Um, do you mean no, really like, a, a duel between two people? No, no, a in, in the sense of one weapon in one hand and the other weapon in the other hand, same character, two axes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um. Um. Normally, it's not a. It's you have a you have an ability. You have a maneuver for it, where it says, "Okay, you, um, you have to. You want to have two different weapons. Then you have on the one hand, you have to learn both of them, and then you have um, a maneuver that says, okay, um, you have two weapons, different kind, and that's it. Mm -hmm. Because it's um, as we said, I think it's possible." It has to be realistic, you know. When you have a a big a big axe where you have to need to two handed, or you have a bow and a dagger, this is a little bit weird. But um, the the basic is is shield and, and and sword. Nobody says okay, I have a shield and a sword. Nobody says oh, this is a weird combination. And when you want to have a a, a sword and a dagger, for example, why not? Mm. You know, it's it's just uh, let me say um, it's it's. it's let's say style or substance a little bit so when you feel cool about it we we try to to help you that you have a cool character and why should i give you minus three because the combination of i don't know sword and and dagger is not good you better have a i don't know so short staff and a dagger or it's it's stupid it's too much there are people who love this kind of 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 um um you know calculating but uh, I think it's it's not necessary um, to to, to so, make it too complicated because um, minus three plus or less doesn't help you. I I do have a question there actually. Um, okay. So to me? <laughs> let's say um, I don't have the um, specialization for some reason, okay? And I still mm -hmm. pick up a second dagger. And when I, when I use that with my first dagger, can I do that and just get like a penalty? Yeah, you get a penalty. Yeah. Or when, right. when you are not or when you're not coming to dagger in general, it's an improved weapon. This is very clear. You get a penalty because you don't have um a maneuver with, with both hands to make daggers in, in both halves. When you have this maneuver you don't seriously don't get the, the, the um penalty. This is all. It's just so, you um, have it, you, you no penalty, you don't have it, you get a penalty. That's all. It, it sounds worse than it is, though, because at uh, character creation, you get to pick a bunch of specializations um, yeah. just for free. And you can easily pick yeah. um, dual wielding. Um, for yeah, that, you, you can you know. throw, throw weapon, you can uh, some feints, you can... Um, I don't know, wild attack, You what do what you choose. Just think about it, what, what do you want to have, what kind of, of style, of, of fighting style do I want to have, and then you can use specializations. And when you, yeah, that's it. Yeah, I can, I can certainly get that. Now, when it, com when it comes to the other end of the equation, the bestiary end of things, mm-hmm, uh, 
do you, do you I'm guessing you I'm guessing you are going to have the a um, a stand a standard li I won't say a standard list because that sounds gen generic but just a list of potential adversaries but do you also have plans on putting it, on putting in a system so that GMs could create their own ad adversaries to throw against the players yeah, we, we haven't found a good solution, to be honest. I, I really like um, um, systems where we can easily can do it. We always hope we have so many monsters that the people are good enough to create their own. But this is maybe a, a good thing for add-on. But so far, we don't have a system where I said, okay, I want to have a, a new monster and I roll uh, some dice and make some stuff and, and here it is. Um, well, the thing is, though, they they follow the same rules as the player characters in, in building them. So technically, you can just, you know, if you know how to build a player character, just build like a monster. And it doesn't have to be like a humanoid monster. It can be something different. Yeah, you know, like you can create a dragon. Um, you just need to know the basic rules, essentially. Yeah. And that, Nobody's... Yeah. That's, Sorry. that's the reason why... The idea, the idea of customizing or or creating new monsters is something I wanted to bring up because, a because um you can only you can only you can only put so many monsters in in a given book. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it would be interesting um to to find a solution. I'm so I'm sure we could find a good solution for this, but I never we never had a. A necessity, can I say this? A need for for this? We as the as the developers, because when we have an idea, we are say, good enough or experienced enough to just write down the, the the stats, and that's it, you know. So we never wanted to have it in, uh, randomly uh, make. But this is is, is maybe a, a gap we have. I can honestly say, and maybe it would be a cool idea to to find a good. Um, um, to have it in, in another book, in an additional, you know, bestiary book and, and how to make your well, randomly I, created monsters. I th actually disagree here. I think um, <laughs> uh, it would be better to have more monsters available just because it makes life easier for everyone, you know, when they run their game. Mm -hmm. But um, really, monster creation is exactly the same as as character creation, just without the... Um, the caps for attributes. So your dragon can go to like 30 um, dexterity or something if you want that. And the character, the player character can't do that. But other than that, it's the same. Yep. You are you are young, Mike, and you never had this old school time we had. So there are a lot of people out there who want to play really old school and sandbox. Just want to say, okay, um, now we go into the room and now I roll some dice and the monster is here. Um, and, that, and this would be okay when people like this were kind of, of easy creating a monster and then giving them the ability to do this without some, some tables and stuff. So you're right, you can do it, but um, there are people who, who love to do this, you know, to create monster randomly with some rolling some dice and, and see what's happening. So it would be an uh, option. Maybe Mike, you will not use it, and maybe I will not use it. But yeah, it would be fair to 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 have this. Mm -hmm. Now, with that in with that in mind, uh, mm -hmm. what would you be what would you be shooting for as far as a total page count for the project? For this um, for this monster, not no, much. For, no, for the. Um... For the book as a whole, what are you shooting for as as far as the page count? It's three hundred books. Well, we are we are close yeah. to finish the translation right now. I think around Christmas we are done. Um, it's about three hundred pages um, mm. with two worlds, the, the whole rule book, um, two worlds, fantasy science fictions in in with everything, also with bestiary and all this stuff. Mm. Um, all the weapons with the whole rules, the whole magic system. And at the end, some hints and tips how you um, create your own worlds, if you like to, and how to create your own um, um, rules. There are three uh, rules, sorry, um, adventures. There are three adventures in it. And maybe um, this is the only thing we, we are working right now to that people how to create um, multidimensional adventures. Um, 
this is we 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 recognize that we need to give more help um to the people that they really easily can make this um, multi-dimensional adventures to switch the worlds in in one evening yeah that certainly makes sense and i will certainly be keep keeping an eye out and looking forward to how things develop but great with, thank you very much with that said i do want to sincerely thank you two for taking the time out of your schedule to come all the way to my temple and enjoy the madness that happens here and thank you very much anytime you see fit to yeah. return the door is always open mm -hmm. as i often say around here drinking is not mandatory but it is encouraged <laughs> Thank you very much. It was a pleasure. Thank you very much for having us um, and talking about our system. So we are looking forward to the to the um, translation. Hope we find some new interesting players around the world now. And of course, a sincere thanks goes out to everyone who took the time out of their schedule to come onto the show and enjoy the madness. And there will be plenty more where that came from, as there always is here on the open bar of the internet. But until then, on behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra, I am your gaming monk, stay fucking frosty everybody!